Welcome back. Last week we talked about how kidneys help with the remo removal of urea and the water and salt balance in humans. In this video we're going to go over the kidneys some more. Uh, but before we start I want to make sure you, we go over this word because you're going to hear it quite a bit in the future. Nephron. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. So like we have liver cells, muscle cells, heart cells, we also have the nephron. And the nephron is the cell of the kidney. So kidneys have millions of nephrons and all the action in kidneys happens at the nephron. So I'm going to go over the actual syllabus dot point. It says explain why the processes of diffusion and osmosis are inadequate in removing dissolved nitrogenous waste in some organisms. I want to go over that word inadequate quickly. Uh, that just means that um, not good enough, right? So explain why the process of diffusion and osmosis by themselves are not good enough in removing dissolved nitrogenous waste in some organisms. Now right here, what I've um, drawn here in yellow, underlined here in yellow, is the same as this part. So this is just zoomed in. Um, now I've got, the, this is the first part of the kidney. We've got the Bowman's capsule, which is a part in, in, in brown, and the glomerulus, which are basically, the glomerulus is just um, blood cells, or blood vessels, which are the ones which carry all the um, nutrients and the urea. So here, these yellow green dots that I've drawn, are the urea, right? So the stuff we want to get rid of. So the nitrogen's waste is the urea. And that enters here. So it enters the um, Bowman's capsule, which is the first part of the kidney. So Bowman's capsule enters it right here. So that's how we get the urea from uh, blood into our kidney for this part, the first part of the kidney, the, the gap between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Um, now, the actual syllabus dot point asks why is diffusion not good enough? Diffusion and osmosis. Now diffusion itself, the definition of diffusion, remember, is a movement of from a high concentration to a low concentration. So something moving from high concentration to low concentration. Now if you think about that by itself, if you have lots of urea in the blood and almost no urea in the kidney, then yes, that will actually work. Like you will have some of them going over. So you like you'll have again like maybe one, two, or three of these going over. So that's why I've only drawn three because you won't have uh, you'll have some going over it like it will work the gradient is from high concentration in the blood to low concentration in the kidney um, but the problem is with diffusion it's not fast enough uh, so it's not fast enough is the problem when it comes to diffusion you can imagine those blood vessels um, traveling uh, the blood in the blood these the blood in the blood vessels here traveling at a very fast rate so it travels fast um, which means you don't have too much time to get rid of this stuff. If only diffusion were to take place, we would get rid of a couple, but not of all of them. Right? So one of the problems with diffusion is it's not fast enough. The other problem is, uh, of this picture here is that we don't just have purely urea in our blood. We also have salts, glucose, and amino acids. And when it comes to uh, the kidney, what it'll do is it will grab some of these urea, bring them over through diffusion, but it'll also get some of these amino acids in purple, bring them over. We get some of the salts and bring them over, and some of the glucose and bring them over as well. So that's obviously not not good because we want to keep quite a few of our glucose, amino acids, and salt molecules because they're needed for um, our our body in general, right? So these are things we don't want to lose in our kidney. They're one of the things we want to be able to reabsorb. But the problem with diffusion is it's not selective enough. So it just go it does it if anything. Anything will. Um, flow, fly over. So not selective enough. Anything will diffuse over. Including all the good stuff we don't want to lose. So with diffusion, two problems. It's not fast enough and it's not selective enough. Um, and there's no way to get the stuff back from our kidneys as well once it's in there. Through diffusion itself. Syllabus dot point also asks why the osmosis is not good enough by itself. And if you remember, osmosis dealt with water. So I've underlined it here. I'll underline it again here. So that deals with water, right? So water travels from low solid to high solid concentration. But obviously urea itself is not water. So if you want to get rid of urea, then osmosis won't help us. It'll only help us remove water. So those are the reasons why diffusion and osmosis are not good enough. Uh, diffusion is from a high concentration to low concentration, but it, not just for urea, but for salts, glucose, and amino acids, which means we're going to lose all of them. And we can't return them back into our blood because um, yeah, we just can't for diffusion. And the other one was that it's not fast enough. So if you have just this happening, it means you're going to have a couple molecules going into a kidney, but most of them will just pass by and they'll just skip nephron because diffusion doesn't happen fast enough. 
And osmosis is not good enough because it just deals with water and we want to get rid of urea. So yellow stuff, we want to get rid of that stuff. And urea uh, is not going to be dealt with by osmosis at all. But there are a few things that if we have diffusion and osmosis and these other two mechanisms, then we're going to be able to um, filter out all the bad stuff and keep all the good stuff. So what I've drawn here, up here, uh, first I'll talk about what filtration is. What filtration actually is, is you can imagine these blood, pre blood vessels here going at a very high rate, so high pressure. So very high pressure, which is almost like a, like a hose um, at its full power, right? So it's really fast. And you can see there's some small holes. Um, I've left some small holes here. These are small holes. These between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. And that high pressure plus the small holes means that more all the urea, because that pressure and the, and the, the, the holes means that all the, the urea can go in. So with filtration, what filtration just is, if filtration is at high pressure uh, combined with like a sieve kind of uh, um, structure from the glomerulus, that's filtration. Um, you've got a sieved structure from the glomerulus and your high pressure, and that means you have all the urea going in. So none of the urea will pass, they'll all go in. So that's one way we can make sure we can bypass the fact that diffusion by itself is not fast enough. We have diffusion and filtration. Those two make sure that all of it comes in. Um, and yeah, and big molecules, such as red blood cells, which will be too big to fit through small holes, won't go in. So white blood cells and red blood cells, they'll stay in the blood, but small molecules like urea will go in. But one problem we still have with filtration is that with filtration, we still have uh, all the good stuff. So we have, literally have all the, the good molecules so amino acids and glucose and salt, we still have all of them going into the actual kidney because it's also not specific. So filtration is not specific, which means now we'll have all of the good stuff in our kidneys, but we want to be able to get the stuff back. We don't want to have, we don't want to lose amino acids and glucose in our urine. We want to get that back. So the, this part, active transports here that I've shown here, this part of the diagram is supposed to represent the same as this area here. We have the Bomus capsule and the glomerulus. And we've got some capillaries as well, some capillaries that just surround the actual <coughs> Bowman's, sorry, <coughs> Bowman's capsule. And the good thing is, even though there's a low uh, concentration on the inside and a high concentration on the outside, remember diffusion goes from high to low. So diffusion won't allow these good things to come back into the blood. Diffusion is, goes from high concentration to low concentration. And there's a low concentration in the actual kidney compared to the, uh, to the blood, so diffusion won't make this happen. But if we have active transport, active transport allows us to move stuff from a low concentration to high concentration. So for active transport, which I'll show with an arrow in red, we can make sure that the, start, the good stuff, the stuff I've drawn here, goes back into our blood. So even though there's a low concentration of the purple stuff here compared to high concentration here, and diffusion wouldn't allow us to, to make that, bring it back, um, active transport will actually. So active transport means we can pump it back in. The only negative side about active transport is it requires energy. So we need to invest ATP to make that happen. But it's good because we want to keep amino acids in our blood. So I'll recap. Um, diffusion is not good enough because it's not fast enough. And diffusion is also not good enough because it's not selective enough. Osmosis is not that useful because it only deals with water and we want to get rid of urea and urea is not water. But if we have diffusion and osmosis and in addition we have these two, we have active transport which allows it to reabsorb um, the useful stuff back into our blood and we have filtration which allows us to get all that urea back into our blood because it's really high power and, and fast moving. We can make sure we filter and clean our blood and keep all the good stuff as well. So hopefully that made sense.